Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to Snow Day, your number one stop for reviews, rants, and ratings in the world of entertainment. I am your host, Hunter Verrill. Let's get started. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to Snow Day. I am your host, Hunter Verrill, and today we're going to be talking about reopening, because as the COVID vaccine is making its rounds, people are becoming more and more comfortable with entering public areas, indoors and out, and there are a lot of things that people are excited to see return to form. Restaurants are slowly becoming more and more lax as less cases are you know, likely to happen. There's a lot more activity in malls and shopping centers. And one of the main things that a lot of my friends and family members were super excited for was the reopening of movie theaters. But I have no idea why. Personally, I can't stand movie theaters. I think they're expensive, disgusting, and a complete waste of time, especially considering how many streaming services are now available that can be viewed from home. Uh, with the virus, it's become a more and more popular thing that movies, instead of entering theaters, can just be rented from home for a slightly higher price, and if you take advantage of this, seeing as everything is usually around 20 to $30, instead of paying 10 tickets per person, you can usually have like 10 people in a house all watching a movie. Not during the time of the virus, that's not what I mean, but as things continue onward, I can only imagine that when people see how obsolete movie theaters are from a logical standpoint, that it will become more of a standard thing to have movies available at the home just for a higher renting price. And usually when I drop that, it's considered a hot take and I get quite a bit of, well, counter arguments. But I just really don't get it because with the introduction and evolution of things like Netflix and HBO Max and all these other streaming services, especially Netflix, because that thing has movies on movies on movies. I just don't understand the point of going to a movie theater. And what makes things more upsetting to me is that people tend to have the main argument of, well, you don't go for the movie, you go for the atmosphere, which I never really understood because obviously I'm someone who's usually watching a movie to enjoy the movie, but there are so many things about the environment of a movie theater that the very same people who compliment it just absolutely despise. It's loud at times. There's annoying people. Uh, chairs are just sticky and gross. And I know it's cleaner most of the time, but it's still just so uncomfortable compared to like a chair in my own house, which is, you know, like mine to sit on and mine alone. There's also just so much food and drink littering the aisles and usually people have the mentality of people are paid to clean this up so I'm just gonna leave it here which is awful but that's aside from the point just everything about movie theaters and again the people who defend movie theaters to me complain about this constantly it's gross next it's really expensive there's so much money you have to spend to go to the movie theater like it's so funny because People were constantly complaining online and in person about how expensive movie rentals had gotten because of the virus. And, you know, these brand new movies that weren't available in theaters were available to you for like 30 bucks. And everyone was just in a complete uproar, even when they weren't on streaming services. Like, you didn't have to have a subscription and then pay for it unless it's Disney, which that's an entirely different thing. I'll get to that later. But if there was no subscription fee, no service, and it's just $30, I totally understand that. Going to the movie theater alone, if you are going to bring two people, just two, people complain about how $30, that's too many people. But if you were to bring two people and get like one popcorn and a drink for each of you, you're going to have $35 to $40 out of pocket. Like it's ridiculous to claim that the movie theater is so much cheaper. And again, you would think that you're paying for really good atmosphere, but as explained previously, you're not. It's really bad. It's Ugh. One thing I will go off on a tangent about definitely, though, is Disney+. Plus. I cannot stand Disney as a corporation, and Disney+, Plus is simply an extension of Disney. Hence the title of the... But recently, well, not so recently, but this last year, 
they had the release of their new live action Mulan movie. It might actually be the worst thing I've ever seen and my family kicked me out of the room because of how much I was yelling at the screen. But regardless, on top of that, to make things just so much more infuriating is the fact that Disney Plus is a monthly subscription. You have to pay in order to view the content constantly. It's not cheap, not too expensive, but it certainly isn't cheap. You would think that, like with all other streaming services, even brand new movies will be easily viewable from the service because you, you know, paid for it. But Mulan had an express premiere date that you had to pay $30 for on top of your subscription. And mind you, if you wanted to watch it without the subscription, you couldn't. You had to be a subscriber and buy the movie. That is a minimum of, and this is if you've not used a free trial yet, $30. But if you want to, you know, be a part of Disney Plus, that's however much you're spending on your monthly and the extra 30 for an awful movie. That, the quality of Mulan, I understand, doesn't really come into the equation because it was just a big budget Disney film, but wow, Mulan was bad. I could do a, an episode on Mulan. I hate that movie. That was just, it was such a jarring thing because to have it be completely standalone, like ignoring the fact that it's meant to be paying homage to one of the best animated movies of all time, it was absolutely awful, degrading, stupid, and like just everything. <laughs> The music was serviceable at best, the acting was cringeworthy, the dialogue of course was awful, and worst of all, just I've never heard someone who wasn't into filmmaking critique cinematography until this movie came out. The idea that there could be so many jarring camera angle switches and so many just awful transitions that someone who doesn't even really pay that much attention to movies could turn to me and say I really don't know what they're doing with this it's embarrassing but then that's even without connecting it to the fact that it's Mulan if you include the fact that it's meant to be a remake of Mulan it's just downright insulting it's like The Last of Us Part 2 like just it existing is somehow making the original just a little bit worse just because you know it's connected to it in any way so that something so bad could be attached to something so good. It's disturbing almost. But back to movie theaters. Ugh. There are so many problems just with the fact that they're open to the public and I'm not saying you should be expected to rent out a theater every single time you want to see something on the big screen because that'd be ridiculously expensive even more so than just going to the movie theater regularly but you have the problem of people and I don't even mean just like you know being gross and being loud but furthermore if you're going to see a movie that you're you know excited to see there's usually a very small community that takes so much joy in spoiling movies very loudly like infinity war and endgame oh man those things star wars sequels too all of those movies were just so like people were waiting so long to see these things and it gave some people so much joy to just completely ruin the experience i don't know what was up with that it, it's not even a brand new thing. Back when the final Harry Potter book was coming out, like people would drive by Barnes and Noble stores, like with megaphones, and just yell out who dies. <laughs> that, that, that was a little funny. But it's because I don't care about Harry Potter. And admittedly, I really hate the Star Wars sequels, but I'm more talking about Infinity War and Endgame. It's just so contrived to me that someone could go to a movie theater knowing full well they aren't there to see a movie. And the worst part is my argument becomes a little inconsistent when the topic of drive-in theaters comes up because I love drive-in theaters. I think they're great. I think the outdoor atmosphere not only really helps with, you know, removing the sound of other people, but also helping deal with the mess because people seem to be a lot more conscious about removing stuff from the environment where they know, like, you know, the workers aren't going to go pick it up. It, sh it doesn't make it any less morally gray, but regardless. But on top of that, there's also just so much more potential for enjoying the people around you. If you aren't going to go to see a movie for the movie, you would certainly want to do it in a location where you're able to indulge the people around you. And a movie theater just isn't that. I don't 
feel as though it's a comfortable environment. I feel like if you're going to, like, you know, take someone out for dinner, go to a movie, you would never really want to do that in a theater. I mean, if it's pouring down rain, but then just go home and watch Netflix. I don't understand. And I'm just really curious to see how the theater is going to evolve, change, or hopefully go away in a post-COVID world. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you on the next snow day.